I almost think of my experience as in like a really rough storm, like in a boat. And you can't go, you can't have a perfect storm, like to be a skilled sailor. And so whatever purpose it was for me to fail the NCLEX three times, like it, it really has blessed me. And I feel like a better woman from it after a year. (laughs) I can't believe I'm saying that, but really I do. I feel like it strengthened me. You're listening to the NRSNG NCLEX Prep Podcast. Are you ready? Demolish the NCLEX with free prep courses at nrsng.com. Hundreds of hours of HD video and dozens of cheat sheets. Never guess on an NCLEX question again. Free for life and available on any device. nrsng.com is your free ticket to RN. Don't waste hundreds of dollars on NCLEX prep and don't be the 19% that fails the first time around. Get started for free today at nrsng.com. What is up, NRSNG community? Today I'm just beyond excited to bring you this episode. This is an interview that I did with a member of the NRSNG community. About a year ago, a nursing student named Ashley reached out to me and said that she had failed the NCLEX three times and she was just beaten down and and didn't know what to do next. Um, I recorded an episode for her and wrote a blog post uh, about failing the NCLEX three times and my tips and my suggestions for for, uh, how to pass. and about two weeks ago, I got another email from Ashley. She wasn't sure if I would remember her, uh, and she said, "Hey, you know, I I, I passed the NCLEX. You know, I'm I'm moving on. I got this license." Uh, and and the very nature of her email, she said "RN" more than an abbreviation, and she she wrote how what it meant to her to pass the NCLEX, what it meant to her to be a nurse. And very quickly after reading that email, I, I responded to her very quickly and I said, "Hey, I, I would love to have you on the podcast if you're willing." Because so many students struggle with this. Uh, I get emails all the time from students who are failing the NCLEX, who are debating giving up on nursing, giving up on their dream. Uh, But what I got from Ashley is I could tell that she was just so dedicated to this profession. Uh, Just from the email, we'd never spoken before. But when I got on the, the... podcast with her last night and we or the episode and started recording and talking with her I found that she is such a motivated positive person um, and she's gonna do a lot of good in nursing she was so excited to come on and to just share her story that it might be able to help one other student out there who might be struggling so if this episode does help you if this resonates with you I would ask you to go over to nrsng.com slash Ashley and and just leave a comment for her tell her that that, that it helped tell her that it did something for you. Ask her a question. She would love to hear from you guys and hear how uh, her experience might help you to get some confidence. So nrsng.com slash Ashley when you have some time. If this episode also helps, please share it with somebody. Please um, leave a comment in iTunes. Leave a comment on the blog. Share it with somebody. There's a little arrow in your in your uh, podcast player where you can just share it with somebody through text or email. Um, but you guys, this was such a motivating podcast for me. After after we talked, I told her, I was like, you've got me motivated to go do, and some, do something great because uh, she's just so full of energy and, and excitement for nursing. Just imagine she, she had a job at one of the top hospitals in the country. She had graduated with a 3.8 GPA from one of the top nursing schools in Colorado, and then she fails the NCLEX. So she has to call this hospital, tell them that she had failed. She had to tell her friends that are all getting nursing jobs and working that she had failed. And then she goes and takes the test again, fails again, has to tell everybody again and again and again, and finally passes. And it's just such an exciting story. So with that, I want to bring you this episode. Again, if, if, if this helps you in any way, please head over to nrsng.com slash Ashley and just tell her how it's helped you. Well, thanks for joining us today. This is John with the NRSNG podcast. Today, I'm excited to talk to Ashley. Ashley reached out to me about a year ago after she had failed the NCLEX three times. And uh, I actually did a podcast episode for her back then and also a blog post. And just a couple weeks ago, I got another email from her with some exciting news. And I just wanted to kind of share that with you and and kind of have her reach out and tell her story about the NCLEX and her nursing journey. So welcome, Ashley. Thanks for coming on. No problem. (laughs) So I just (laughs) want to share about about a year ago, I got the the following email from you. you said, I have now failed the NCLEX three times. I have a job. I'm a smart woman and graduated with honors from nurse, nursing school. I'm incredibly frustrated at this point. What would you recommend to a nursing student in my position? Uh, and, and when I got that email, it really 
kind of stuck out to me because I, I had worked with a lot of nursing nurses that had failed multiple times. Uh, and then I saw students that had failed and it just really seems like it drug them down. And some people would even reach out to me and say they failed and they had thought about getting out of nursing. So kind of tell me how you felt a year ago when, when you had failed for the third time. I remember writing this email to you and I was just weeping in the library because at that point my computer had broke. <laughs> and so I'm sitting in this little box just typing away and I was miserable. Like I really honestly thought I'm like I thought like I thought this was my calling for so long. Like mm -hmm. nursing is what I wanted to do. For four years, I had worked so hard, and I was unsure, should I change my career, should I do mm. something else? And I honestly, in desperation, I wrote out to you, <laughs> and ugh, it felt terrible. <laughs> I, can, I can only imagine. I, I mean, I remember walking out of taking the NCLEX, and I, I called my wife like right away. I was like, I really have no clue if I passed or not. I, I don't have a clue. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You really have no idea and you feel so like gross about it almost. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I Absolutely. remember um, I'll walk you through the first time I failed. I decided I would run 10 miles <laughs> and I cried the whole time. Oh, and gosh. it was, and I just remember, I'm like, I, I want to die. Like, mm. I just don't understand. I thought I knew so much. And for some reason, I, I was like, wow, I failed. And the rest of my class was successful. Mm -hmm. How, why am I going through this? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, maybe I was too confident. I thought I was the bee's knees and <laughs> that I could do anything and yeah it really it just sucker punched me <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I couldn't. and and so but before we started recording you told me I mean you had done well in school you were 3.8 student like a lot of us and I mean it's not like you went into the NCLEX unprepared or or you know you were a bad student that just got lucky through school I mean it sounds like you worked really hard Oh yeah, I did, and I'm I'm a I would consider myself a, a trotter. I work really hard, and talent has come a little bit, but it's mostly just work ethic mm -hmm. that keeps me going. That's awesome. And so, oh. about a week ago, Ashley reached out to me again, and and this is the email she wrote. She said, "I'm not sure if you remember me, but I'm the woman who wrote a message about failing the NCLEX three times and having a job offer." Well, I wanted to tell you thank you for your help with the NCLEX process and podcast. I took all your advice. I had some suffering months, but I did, did make it out alive. I finally passed the NCLEX my fourth time, and this one abbreviation means more to me than you will ever know. I'm so grateful and blessed to have had that, this experience. I have grown from one, my one year of NCLEX trials. I could not thank you enough for your advice and optimism. I will be starting my new job in the cardiac surgery PCU. I will continue to keep in touch and listen to your engaging and mo motivating podcast. And, and beyond that, the subject line that you chose was RN dot 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 more than an abbreviation. And that, that just really stuck out to me. I, mean, I had to kind of dig into the email right away because I could tell that this was someone that just kind of resonated with what we're trying to do here at NRSNG, that, you know, that, that this just isn't some thing that we do, you know. And, and so, I mean, tell me about that email that you wrote this week and how that felt. Well, I finally realized after a couple of weeks that I should reach out to you. I'm like, this is time. I'm like, maybe he would know or maybe he would <laughs> kind of remember me. But after after this, I pretty much took a, a year of self-discovery through this whole NCLEX process. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, I really truly believe, like, nurses like we know suffering and we're fully aware of how precious each moment life is mm -hmm. but it's just a huge commitment and it's it's more than just the title it really it, you take on a huge life change to be a nurse mm -hmm. and you i mean whether you touch someone's life or a life will touch yours like you make an impact every day and that and that's why to me it's more than abbreviation because it's it's a whole life change. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, do you, so, I mean, do you feel that uh, this process has made it mean more to you or did it, do you think that it always meant kind of the same thing or? Oh no, it means so much more. I, I mean, I truly meant what I wrote <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, I, I think people take for granted 
um, what it is to be a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm like, gosh, I worked so hard. I mean, I um, felt like I did a full time job trying to study for this. For this one test mm-hmm. that is terrible. <laughs> the devil, really. It really is. It really is. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and, and still, I mean, the fourth time I walked out, and it <laughs> and to me, I, I it felt different, and I'm like, oh, like, maybe I passed it this time, but I still, I think back, and I still didn't know half the things. I just really critically thought about mm-hmm each answer and how to be a safe and effective nurse but it's i I, it's nothing like the real world it's nothing like (laughs) the real world and that's the thing like if if you spent time in the hospital like you'll probably do worse on the NCLEX i think because it's really nothing because i like you like the one thing they care about is being a safe nurse i mean that that is important in the real world but what they assume is that everything is perfect and Mm -hmm. and all they care about is are you going to choose the safest Thing. I mean, they, they want to make sure you're not going to kill somebody, but in the perfect world, sometimes that, you know, there's gray areas. Right. And people will die. Like I, that's, people die. That happens. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Um, that sounds terrible. That's not, yeah. No, it but, is. Yeah. A- yeah. Absolutely. But... <laughs> so we, we, we know your story a little bit and we'll get into this a little bit more, but tell us a little bit about okay. who you are and why you chose to become a nurse. <clears throat> okay. Well, I am 25. I am a twin Caucasian female. (laughs) And my sister and I are both um, very driven, determined, like highly motivated individuals. So nursing is actually my second degree. Yeah, me too. (laughs) And I started started with dietetics and realized that I wanted something more. So I I stayed in the health field. But I... I truly found nursing because my grandma is really stubborn Mm -hmm. and she pushed me to become a nurse. She always told me it was my calling and I should try it, Mm -hmm. but I, I just didn't listen to her. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then one day I decided, I'm like, I should, I should do it. I think I love people. I'm selfless. I'm like, I I just want to like love them, love people at their weakest moments. Mm -hmm. Like maybe this will be for me. And my first day, I remember I, like, walked into our classroom, and there was this girl in yellow, this yellow sweater, which ended up being my best girlfriend, <laughs> Shannon. And we hit it off right right away, and I finally realized in the whole room that this whole entire time, like, these were my people. Like, I finally found myself and, mm-hmm. like, found where I fit. Mm-hmm. And after that, I was like, yep. I'm totally, this is where I'm meant to be. Like, cool. it was it was the coolest feeling. That is cool. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, because I, I, I feel like I had somewhat of a similar experience. I mean, nursing was like my second or third career, and I didn't go until I was later in life. And <clears throat> I think, too, I like it was kind of the same feeling. Like, you, I grew so close to the people I was in school with because we each had a different reason for going into nursing, but the, we all had at the core, like, that we wanted to help people in some way, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that common goal and then how difficult nursing can be, like you really grow incredibly oh, close uh, to those people. Like it's I still almost I, a family. It yeah. is, yeah. Like I still stay in touch with everybody. We're still Facebook friends and message and keep up with each other's lives mm-hmm. and their kids and everything years later, you know. Oh, of course. So mm-hmm. dietetics, that's cool. My wife is actually a dietitian. Um, oh, she <laughs> yeah, she is, and so she uh, she works uh, in the ICU as well, and she does like uh, parenteral nutrition and stuff like oh, that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, TPNs, mm-hmm. all those, and so she loves mm-hmm. it. But it's really nice having that we both have that uh, ICU yeah, that thing back- we can talk about, and like you know, because death does happen, and most people you need a way to cope with it, and we have each other that we can kind of talk about it with, and it's nice. So tell us, what, what do you want to do with nursing? Why why nursing? Beyond just caring for people and stuff, why did you want to be a nurse? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I, I've taken care of people my whole life, and it almost became just a natural thing for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I fell in love with it, and I... It's weird to say that for a career, <laughs> but I really know I have a huge passion for it. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes in college, students are trying things out and don't really know where they fit. <laughs> and for me, I, I, it just 
it became such a, I don't know, a priority to me. Like it wasn't hard to study because mm. I enjoyed it so much. Yeah. And I think about just um, my like ambitious goals with nursing and where I want to be. And a lot of it just reflects on the people. Like I just want to love people and take care of them mm. and know that they matter and that they care. That's cool. And yeah, I think in a, in a way, once you become a nursing student, you kind of lose that connection with people and you still need that as a bedside nurse. Like you definitely need to be strong and intelligent, mm-hmm. but compassion can really like be a huge tenfold to nursing. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And because really as uh, do you work, uh, did you ever work as a tech or anything like that while you were in school or? Yep, I worked in the nursing home, okay, and I good. loved loved that job. Yeah. <laughs> and then I worked in the hospital for two years, good. and as a tech, and I I have a, I'm kind of an adrenaline junkie, so mm-hmm. I was in the emergency department for a little bit, mm-hmm. and just yeah, I loved it. Well, yeah. <laughs> like I mean, it's a, like the whole experience, whole journey has been great. Yeah. It's hard. Absolutely. Painful. Yes. <laughs> but like you said, like that that compassion, I think, is what. You know, and that's kind of cliche almost to even say, but like the compassion, like just being able to explain to people in a way that they can understand. Um, Because I I had Nurse Nicole uh, on here a a week or two ago, and and we talked about that too, that like the compassion and and reaching out to people and explaining to them what you're doing, why you're doing it, not only helps them, but it really just, it makes the whole process better for them and it makes their whole experience in the healthcare system better for them rather than just rushing through the process and trying to get your job done, you know? And it makes the person matter. Like, you know, you're not a robot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, you ha- yeah, you have a checklist of things you need to do. But when it comes down to it, you know, the patients are talking to you. They're not talking to the doctor most of the time. Uh-huh. For sure, <laughs> like exactly. Like, they want to they trust you, and so you have to build that relationship. Absolutely. So what are your future plans with nursing? What do you want to do, you know, in a couple of years, five years, ten years? Uh, well, <clears throat> so I'm going into cardiac, and uh, I have to be trained as part of my job, um, since I'm a new grad yeah. now, yay, <laughs> uh, I have to do ICU, oh, um, cool. sur- surgical, PCU, and then I think I have one more, oh, OR, so I have to, I get oriented to all these different places. That's awesome. They want to make me well-rounded, mm-hmm. which is wonderful, but I have a very long orientation, so that's really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I I really do see myself becoming a nurse practitioner down the road. Okay. okay. And I, um, I had an internship in Minnesota, and I got to shadow a nurse practitioner, and I loved that too. Was like it like it, a hospital nurse practitioner a, or like clinic? Yeah, or? yeah. Um, it was a specialty. So I was in the onc unit. Oh, cool. And I followed, yeah. Um, she did immunology, mm-hmm. so I followed her for the day. And I really that onc was my first love. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of fell into the hearts. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I think. But that, I. I mean, so I won't say what hospital you got hired to, but I mean, she got actually got hired to one of the top ten hospitals in the country, and uh, I think that's that's so fantastic that you get to rotate through all these units and kind of see how the process works, and hopefully that takes re- gets rid of some of that cattiness and backbiting that can happen between units in the hospital, maybe, hopefully. Oh yeah, by far. <laughs> but yeah, so cardiac surgery PCU. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, would you would you like to work like as a cardiac NP or like an intensive care NP eventually, or? I guess I'll have to see where the road goes. <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly at first thought I wanted to do critical care mm-hmm. nursing. Mm-hmm. And so I I am really pretty driven for that. Yeah. But my parents are both um, my I'm I'm adopted. Well, I guess I'm an orphan, but I my family, they're both teachers, so they kind of push education. So okay. someday I kind of see myself getting a master's mm-hmm. in education. Okay. But as part of my job, I have to do so many certifications oh, already. Good. So really the first year, I think I walk out with 15 certifications wow. required. That's so right. I have, have, I have a, I'll be studying a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's incredibly already. overwhelming right now to even think about, oh. but like getting, getting, <laughs> getting certified within your specialty is so much better than like studying for the NCLEX. Trust me, like 
as you're yeah. as you're studying for your certification like you start <laughs> learning more and you start becoming more hands-on and you start feeling like you're part of that team and and it gets you to a level that you can start communicating better with the physicians and stuff as you learn your specialty so that's fantastic what a great uh I know it's still probably very overwhelming to you with everything else, but oh, oh yeah. I mean, I haven't even started my first day and I'm overwhelmed. I'm like, man, I have so much to do. I know. <laughs> but it's a good, you know, it's like an exciting, like happy time. I'm like, oh yes, I'm a nurse. I'm excited, but this is terrible. <laughs> this is <gross>. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I have so much to do. Man, oh. But um, John, I do want to tell you one of my future goals, maybe in the next five or ten years but have um have you ever heard of the nightingale award uh nightingale award i don't think i've heard of that one at each state rep um, represents certain nurses every year mm-hmm. for being an advocate or leadership uh-huh. or volunteering so forth and that's like one of my like oh, yeah. i guess my career goals is to get that <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> Okay, Maybe I'll we'll have just, to look it look it up and then we I just can googled chat it. About yeah, it. I just googled it. <laughs> I'll have to look into that. I haven't heard about that. That's great. No, that's good. Yeah, because I mean that's uh, it's it's good to have those goals in your career too. Otherwise, nursing really can start dragging you down, and that's just coming from experience working on the floor. Because all the politics and everything within a hospital can can become a huge weight, and so having having that bigger vision of something that you want to do. Uh, you know, for me, it was this. It was the this NRSNG thing. It's this bigger vision of educating nursing students and stuff and I think for you you already have that goal and that vision where hopefully you know everything within nursing and working in a hospital doesn't bring you down and I've seen nurses that become jaded Mm -hmm. and it's really sad I'm like gosh like what happened to you you know and it can can happen incredibly quick I mean uh, I I work you know in, in a pretty big and busy ICU where there's a lot of death and there's a lot of understaffing and stuff because of uh, how difficult it is and and we'll have nurses that only last out of school a month or two just because it's so it it can really weigh you down and I feel for those nurses you know because they put the same amount of effort and time and energy into getting this license and then it's just it's gone you know Mm -hmm. Um, so I think part of it maybe is you know obviously my hospital could revamp the way they educate and train nurses but Part of it, I think, too, is having that bigger vision of what this is and what it can be. By far. So tell, let's go. Let's get into your uh, nurse, your NCLEX studying and things like that. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so tell me, take me to that that first time. So we're gonna dwell on it just for a minute, and and, and, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna, you know, break it down or anything, but. <laughs> nope. I mean, I, I knew I was going to open up some wounds today, but I'm doing this for the greater good. Well, I appreciate for, it. You're welcome. <laughs> so you were, you were working as a tech or of some sort uh, af- when you took the NCLEX the first time. Is yes. that right? That's um, right, yeah. And you were close with your cohort, your, your classmates and everything. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> you were getting the stories back that people were passing and starting their jobs so you go, you take the NCLEX the first time, and you don't pass. What? How did you cope with and handle, you know, expressing that to your? I mean, you already had a job too. How did you? How did you approach yeah, all this well, and all and, these people without? Oh gosh. You know, because it had to be done. How did you do it without and have the courage to do it? <laughs> well, first off, I would say I broke down after the NCLEX because. <laughs> I think you're so pent up from studying so much <laughs> that you just have to get it off your system. Yes. <laughs> and it was so stressful and and all that pressure with people around you and constantly leaving. And I, I'm a very slow test taker. Mm-hmm. You'll find out later in the story kind of what <laughs> I ended up finding out about myself. Okay. But I, <laughs> I had to um, really take a week and self-reflect mm. and, and really ask myself, is this worth it? Like, you know, like I did all this work, like what what went wrong? And I finally, when I got my results back, because obviously every nursing student wants to pay to get their quick results. Yeah. So, I, so I knew within three days and I just saw on that line, I'm like, fail. Hmm. And like my heart almost stopped beating. I'm like, wow, mm-hmm. what happened? And I had to really think deeply and I'm like, is something wrong with me? Like, mm. am I not smart? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, what, like, what, what am I going to do? And so 
I really had to collect myself. And so when I actually started talking to my nurse manager, who's now my official nurse manager, <laughs> he was so positive. Hmm. And he told me, he's like, Ashley, he's like, don't give up. He's like, you've gone through so much work. He's like, this happens hmm. all the time. He's like, I hear stories all the time about this. He's like, you're not the first one. Like, you're going to get through this, and you're going to call me when you pass. Hmm. And he's like, just tell me your schedule, what you're thinking, and we'll go from there. He's like, it's not a big deal. No. And so yeah. I honestly, from that, that was the hugest phone call that I had to make because yeah. that was really so much weight lifted off my shoulders. I mean, you're, were you afraid good, they were going to yeah. rescind the offer and say, well, oh, yeah, I felt like clearly you're not gone. good enough for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. And I'm, and I already had so much pressure from where my, you know, my family and just where I'm going for yeah. my new job that I, I was miserable, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I was shaking, like trying to make this phone mm. call. Yeah, no kidding. I, I remember sitting outside my house and it was sunshine out and I was like, Oh, thank the Lord, it's not gluing me. <laughs> <laughs> like I just need to be positive about this. Oh man! But it, uh, but I felt so supported mm -hmm. that it it helped. Mm -hmm. And I ended up only telling a few of my friends because I was so sad and just, you know, you almost don't want to share it with people that you Absolutely. failed because yeah. you feel. Like a yeah, failure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. You you you, and you start to think it. Right. You you blame and yourself for your yeah. Mm hmm. And then you you feel that your classmates will make fun of you or that that they question if you're going to be a good nurse. Mm. And you start to create all these like webs and certain negativity and it just storms and you're like, stop, like I'm creating a story. I can't do this. Mm. <laughs> like I have I'm not going to think about this. Like that's their journey where they're going. This is mine. And really. I had to take responsibility and be like, all right, like I must have not been well prepared. Like I probably took it too lightly. Hmm. And like I need to re rethink my strategy for life right now. Hmm. <laughs> and so it took a lot. The first time was the worst. <laughs> and then the, the next couple times got a little better, but <laughs> it still hurt. Yeah. The first one was like a knife to my chest. Okay, so. <laughs> so. You have, you have to wait, to, is it like 45 days between each test or something like that? Is that the yes. rule? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So between Sometimes. between these three attempts, you're seeing your friends starting their jobs, you know, working in hospitals and things. Oh, yeah. I'm hearing stories. I'm like, it's, They're doing all the cool stuff. It's painful. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, gosh, like, I have to sit here and watch your Facebook posts or you... Mm. Or my friends that are nurses tell me about their days or just where life is and I feel stuck. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, I'm lost. Like so what's, can't believe I didn't pass the unclick. Yeah. I mean, so <laughs> <laughs> what what really? specific things did you do to keep yourself motivated and, and positive? I mean, you had to remain positive just to get through life. I mean, we're talking forty five oh. several, you know, years worth of time. How did mm -hmm. you keep yourself going toward this? Well, I definitely did a lot of CrossFit because <laughs> I needed to get that out of my system. Uh -huh. my, my mental health needed to be a lot better. <laughs> but I, I stuck to my closest friends and I didn't worry about everyone else. And I honestly kind of went off social media. I hmm. just kind of took everything that was negative in my life and I threw it away. And I'm like, wow. you know what? Like, I'm, I'm going to get through this. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a storm and I have got to persevere. Mm -hmm. And so I, I still worked, but I worked part time and I focused solely on the NCLEX. Wow. Like I really, I was adamant. I'm like, no, like this will not beat me down. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so now that we're, so, I mean, I, I, I can only feel for you. I mean, I can imagine how, because we've all had failures and things like that. But for, for a failure to carry on for, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to call it. I mean. For a failure, ahead, for lack no, of a better no, word, to, say it. <laughs> to, to fail for a year, um, most people never experience that. And I think that that's just, it's incredibly inspiring that you kept uh, that focus and that uh, determination for that long. I mean, I don't, I don't personally know if I could, if I could have done that, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I, I commend you. And that's why I think there's so many out there that, 
that kind of remain in the shadows with this. You know, they might post a, 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 a you know a link or two on on all nurses or something about failing, but they kind of try to keep in the shadows or give up. And I, I think that's just so incredible that you were able to stick with it for that long. So I just, that's amazing. It really is. Thank you. Yeah. So <laughs> so tell us what what study materials and what study guides plans eventually do you believe worked the best for you? <laughs> well, I've probably tried everything under the sun. <laughs> so I can tell you what really was awesome for me. And some people might not agree with me, but that's okay. Whatever <laughs> makes them happy. Yeah, um, yeah different strokes <laughs> for different folks, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so I tried Hearst mm -hmm. and I tried Kaplan mm. and those did not work for me. Mm -hmm. Like I, I realized, you know, after my third time, I'm like, okay, like mnemonics don't help and I can't Thank do you. some, some, Thank you. some, some <laughs> hippie tree strategy to help me get through that. I promise like, no, like, like... Really, we didn't rehearse this, you know, like this is, this, <laughs> I, I, I didn't ask you at all before. But thank you. Like mnemonics just tick me off because they don't teach you the material. You don't understand with the mnemonic. So exactly, go ahead. and you honestly, <laughs> you have got to learn your content. You do. Like if you you really if you don't understand it or if you can't even teach it, you need to go back through and re revamp what you just did. Right during the middle of a code, you can't be running a mnemonic in your head to save the patient. You got to understand what the heck's going on. Exactly, so, and so. Um, well, I wrote probably 500 flashcards, mm. I would say. Wow. I mean, in this whole, you know, one year aspect, uh, I really, I also, um, I took ATI mm -hmm. and I took, what was, what's that test called? Oh, I took many standardized tests mm -hmm. and they told me I was at passing level. Mm. And that was encouraging. This was before you was, took the I first was, time or, uh, or This like... was after the second and third. Okay. And so I realized, I'm like, why, why am I nearly passing, but I'm on standardized tests, I'm like getting it. Mm -hmm. And that's what kind of weirded me out. But anyways, um, your, oh, you sent me on your blog or mm -hmm. podcast that you sent me, prioritization delegation oh, assignment. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's a gold mine. Isn't that that's the best book out there? Like <laughs> oh, I've looked it, at trying no, really, to really it is the best. Oh yeah, I've looked at trying uh, to like recreate that and I just I don't. I don't even try. Like it's it is the best oh, book for those. No, everyone should purchase that. Absolutely. And if you can if you can take those questions and get them right, you're golden. The NCLEX, NCLEX will be brief. It is. I truly. believe it. Because those are the hardest questions I ever took. They really and... are. And they folk there's a lot of those questions. And I loved it. Like I really I went through the whole Good. book. And I and I went through. I did all of Saunders comprehension. Mm -hmm. um, I really, I mean, I dug through a ton of things, and it probably actually my med surge is probably awesome now <laughs> <laughs> because I have such a broad knowledge spectrum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I also um, I took so medications. I I went through. I think the majority of your NRSNG podcast because mm -hmm. there's so many oh, mm -hmm. drugs and I hate drugs and I have a terrible <laughs> I have a very poor memory yeah, you'll come to love and them so... don't worry you'll love them <laughs> and so I really I struggled mm -hmm. actually and I remember after my was it my second or third time one or the other after I had gone through your whole medication um course I improved completely. I was like above awesome. the passing level. Do you mean, you like, mean the podcast yeah. or the course? Um, I did both. Oh, okay, great. Good. Well, that's Sorry. good. I'm glad that it I helped had some, that much. I had some good. time. Yeah. <laughs> good. You know, when you're desperate, you'll do anything. <laughs> good. That's so a... that was really a key for me. Um, and I also, I reviewed a Kaplan stuff, but I mostly just went through med surge and tried to understand where mm -hmm. I was. Mm -hmm. Because I, after you fail so many times, you start to realize what's weak for you or what areas in the NCLEX were awful. And for me, basic care and comfort was terrible. Really? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Even though I was, I mean, near passing on everything, I couldn't, 
somehow grasp it like mm-hmm. like how to walk in with a cane that was like, you know what I mean like weird stuff like yeah. that where I'm like how am I gonna teach that or remember that you know what I mean like there were some things I just like Didn't I don't click. know I don't know well, I don't know why it wouldn't stick <laughs> but those were the best for me and then oh yes last last thing that I did was probably one of the cheapest things you could have done would have saved me thousands of money I went to national council NCSBN, mm-hmm. NCSBN, the official yeah. mm-hmm. owners of the NCLEX, and I did their course, mm-hmm. and that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, it was so much cheaper than everything I paid for yeah. oh, over, you know, a year of time, and it gave me what I needed. Yeah, like, it's very condensed. Was, like, it's very, very condensed. yeah, it's very bullet pointed of, of different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, but, uh, on all the flashcards that you made, what, what were you putting on these flashcards? Was it like what, what was on the front and back and, and how did they work for you? So I did systems. Okay. And I had to make sure that I understand how the whole system worked. Okay. So I would break a system down. So I'd break down cardiac. Mm-hmm. I'd break down neurology. I'd break down fluid and electrolytes. And I, I honestly worked it through. Like I would... I would just kind of do, so for fluid and electrolytes, I just did F&E, mm-hmm. and then I on the front part, I would put fluids, mm-hmm. and I just did isotonic mm-hmm. and all the rest of them, and then I would think it in my head, I'm like, and say it out loud mm-hmm. to myself, what are these, and what do they do, mm-hmm. and that really helped me. Okay. So you're just making yourself and, and just, talk through the details behind it. I, talk, I talked it through, yeah. and then I would... Make sure that I understood how it worked. Okay. Not just like, and I mean, cellularly was great, but just how it worked with the patient. I'm like, okay, why would I give this? Because they're dehydrated, because they have severe burns. Mm-hmm. What, you know, mm-hmm. and really think about it. I really had to like stretch myself. And that, you're right. <laughs> and, that, and that's the that's the critical thinking, right? Like, right, being yeah. able to say, what's an isotonic fluid? Like, that's simple, you know? But what, mm-hmm. what conditions and why for those conditions? I think that connection is lost in nursing schools a lot. Oh, it's so bad. Like, like it's, we teach it's... memorization, and that's not what you need. You need to know no. why this fluid works for that, you know? And I and I loved my program, and mm-hmm. we're ranked, like, number one in the state. Mm-hmm. But I walked out of there, and I don't think I knew how to critically think. I think I knew. <laughs> honestly, I think I had all this material and mm-hmm. all this knowledge, but I couldn't, like, piece it together, right. and it had to take me a year to really understand it. Right. No, and that and that's killer, you know? It like, is. it just kills me saying that because they're wonderful. Like, I loved my program, but... No, but I think that's... I, I mean... That's one yeah. of the, the big problems in my mind, personally, with the nursing education is that we love to say critically think. We love that word. Like, it, we love it. It's such a good word, but... But can you do but it? But what, is it, what does that you mean? Know? Teach me. What does right. that mean? How do I critically... Like, you're telling me that from day one, but what does right. that mean, and how do I do it? Uh, uh, and instead of that, like we're shoving mnemonics at you and, and memorization lists. And it's like, I think that needs to be cut out and we need to be saying, this is what these are. Once you have all those things learned and understood, I think mnemonics have a place, but not until you know what you're talking I, about. Exactly. Because if, I mean, heck, if you don't know what amaritron, you know, mm-hmm. if you don't know a certain drug and what it's going to do, you just know the mnemonic, that will never it's help never you. It's never going to save you. Like, <laughs> and it, I mean, it, it really... Ugh. It just hurt to know that I had to teach myself critical thinking, <laughs> and it's but it it's good. I mean, I take pride in it, and I'm very happy that I got through this. But it just, I believe nursing schools need to be revamped. Yes, and I completely. I agree 100. Um, I do think the book prioritization delegation Ass- uh, assignment helps with teaching um, critically thinking a little bit if you read through all those rationales and stuff. And then, I, I mean, we're working on, we're trying to develop some sort of course or videos or things to really teach it, because I, I really think that's missing out there. Um, so let's say you can rewind the clock 18 months, okay? You can go back to last June or something. What, mm-hmm. what three study resources would you give yourself? Delegation, prioritization, assignment, mm-hmm. hands down. Yep. I would do the NCS bn course Mm -hmm. just to like help refresh yourself Mm -hmm. and then i would listen to your podcast on medications Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh, simple i think yeah (laughs) exactly but if you work hard in school and stuff if you find a system that works and and what helps you you know you just finding those resources that kind of uh 
I don't know, go uh, help with that or, or encourage that, I guess, is, would be a good way to go. But yeah, so, okay, so tell us, so you've been, you've been working in the healthcare field for a while now, and um, you've had time to kind of think about where you want to go with nursing and everything, but can you think back and kind of share one of your most memorable nursing experiences, whether as a student or a tech or whatever? As a nursing student? Uh, either way, whatever. Just a, a memorable experience with a patient or whatever, whatever. <clears throat> Something that really sticks out. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, I was in Minnesota and I was working on the onc floor. And I had this patient who had a very rare osteosarcoma mm-hmm. in, this, in the spine. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was my age. Mm which was really shocking Mm -hmm. to me because I never thought I would deal with patients that were my age. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it was a really bittersweet moment because she was diagnosed in December, had a child in January, Mm -hmm. and then when I met her in May, she was struggling really bad. Mm -hmm. And so she opened up to me in a way that I have never felt with anyone yet. Mm -hmm. I I think I will get to that point when I am a nurse, but she really moved me. And I remember her telling me, she's like, Ashley, nobody understands why I want to die. Hmm. And I told her, I'm like, look, I'm like, you are in the worst pain you could possibly be. She had drips of ketamine. Hmm. She had a spinal tap. She had probably every line that you could think of mm-hmm. that she was running. And she told me, she's like, I'm miserable and nobody, everybody wants me to keep living. And she's like, <laughs> I think I'll be happier when I die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I, I told her, I'm like, you know what? Like, this is your choice mm-hmm. and you don't have to do anything. Like, you know, God will provide and he is going to help you get through this no matter what happens. And you have got to believe in yourself and mm-hmm. We just kind of, uh, we would talk about Pinterest and like have like really, you know, like. Just girly talk, to, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and we got, I got down to her level. Yeah. And was able to meet her needs mm-hmm. without having to stretch myself or be an adult or be someone that I'm not. Mm-hmm. Like I could just be who I am at that point. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. Like we just matched so well. So every time I would work, she would make sure I was on and mm-hmm. I would get her as my patient. <laughs> And I, it, you know, I really, I struggled with boundaries, obviously, Mm -hmm. because I'm super connected to her. And she passed away, actually, right after Mm -hmm. I went back home to Colorado. But it was one of those moments where I just knew, I'm like, wow, I made a difference in her life. Like, she wrote me a letter before she died Mm -hmm. about, like, how she was so thankful that I was there for her during that time. And... It, yeah, it moved me. And it, like, I mean, I there's things that you stick on to in nursing, and that's definitely one of them. Absolutely. Like, it encourages me. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, there's there's so much in that story that I think could make uh, solo podcast episodes, I mean. But, <laughs> but uh, I, I, yeah. uh, I think that's a fantastic story. And I guess... Uh, and, and and me and I was 23 uh, and I had to like really absorb all that. It's like <laughs> that's hard. It that's a lot. lot. That's a lot. Yeah, Absolutely. no, it is. It is. I, you. And, yeah. And I th- it changes you. I think that things that happen uh, with I'm not an incredibly political person or anything like that, but I think that things that happen uh, in the world and in politics and in the U.S. and things like that, when you come at it from a nursing perspective and, and having seen things like that in and out, day in and out, every time you go to work, you're actually dealing with death um i think that it changes the way that you see a lot of things um and i think that a lot of our friends who aren't nurses just can't get it there's no way that they could no, ever understand they... what we do or what we see and it, it's just so hard to get them to grasp like what i do every day yes. i'm like I'm like, no, really, YOLO. Like, really. <laughs> Seriously, guys. <laughs> it, may, it really means something. Yes. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a teenager, but <laughs> life is so precious. It is. And I, I think I've shared. <laughs> we take it for granted. We do. We take it for and granted. I think I've shared this story several times maybe before, but the, the one patient that sticks out to me more than anyone else was a guy that was uh, about my age. Well, he was my age exactly, um, and our birthdays were like a week apart. 
and he had a, a daughter that was the same age as my daughter, a year a year old at the time. Um, and he was he had a, a a very strange, rare pathology in the brain that caused you know hydrocephalus to the point that uh, the neurosurgeons, the neurologists, the infectious disease docs could not diagnose what it was, but it ended up you know he ended up herniating and, and dying. Um, and, and, but I was with that family for three days in and out every night with them and with their, their husband, their son, their brother. Um, and then seeing pictures of his little daughter that didn't get to tell her dad goodbye, you know, and those, and, and, and being, you know, and I'm still friends with the family on Facebook, like in situations like that, I just don't believe necessarily in boundaries. You know, I have to be able to separate myself and be able to move on with my life, but I was there for that family and they provided a life-changing experience for me as well um but yeah it's it's, people can't understand that i mean we're such a different breed too (laughs) to think that you know like like i got invited to her funeral you know what i mean like like most people don't get invited to those things but we do you know we go to baby ceremonies Mm -hmm. and baby showers i guess that's what you call Mm -hmm. it and but we're like so a part of their lives that it it, it transforms us, but I think it transforms them, too. Absolutely. No, for sure. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I did another episode, too, where I talked about uh, compassion fatigue, I think. And I, I talked about, like, how what is it about us as nurses that motivates us to be in this time of life with people? Like, is it, are we, I don't know, is it audacious or is it compassion or what is it? Like, why are we, right, why are we putting yeah. ourselves in that situation? Because these people will never forget us and we'll never forget them. And, I, and it's such a... Uh, it, it's an incredible, you know, after that, after that patient, I actually, when I drove home from work, I actually went to my parents' house and it was, uh, after, it was after a night shift and I was exhausted, uh, but I went to my parents' house and I just, I told them like, I love you guys, you know, and, and, uh, oh. you know, cause it was like, like, like you yeah. said, like YOLO, you know, it's like, holy crap, like <laughs> that, that could have, like, this wasn't because this guy was obese. It wasn't because he was drinking and got in an accident. It wasn't because a lot of the th- things I see, uh, in a neuro ICU, it was because like no one knew he was just my age. And had a daughter right. my daughter's age and it's like holy crap like that could have been that oh, could yeah. be me right there right now <laughs> Mind blow- you know like that could have been me like mm-hmm. i could have lived that life but somehow you know i'm still here exactly exactly <laughs> and it oh it just it it gets to your core it really does it really and i i guess i truly believe if you're going to be here on this earth like you need to make someone's life better I agree and I think that's what draws maybe our type of people are drawn to nursing <laughs> maybe that's what it is maybe that's but my, my my job before nursing I was I was a, a buyer for a large sporting goods store and I I would go to work at nine come home at five and sit in my desk all day buying golf balls from Asia and it just I would go home just ticked off every night you know I I, I looked forward to Friday every day and then on Sunday I was already depressed for the coming week and and that changed the moment I started nursing school, you know, that, that was gone, uh, you know, cause it like, I was doing something good, you know, even if it was, right. even it was just for one small thing, one patient that says thank you or gives you a Christmas card or whatever it is, it, it, uh, it does change you. So I think I'm, I'm glad that you decided to stick with it. You clearly have a tremendous amount of passion and it seems like you're really in the right spot, you know? Thank you. It it really took a lot. I mean, I did question myself so many times. <laughs> yes. Well, good for you. So we've been talking about an hour now already, actually. So. Oh really? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um. So tell me, let's what what one piece of parting advice would you give to someone who's struggling to pass the NCLEX? Okay. So I um. There's two things that I I really hold on to to this day and that I also held on to with the NCLEX, but it's called the four P's. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of it? Uh, don't know. Maybe. (laughs) Okay. Patience, positivity, prayer, and perseverance. Mm. And first off, you were, as a nursing student, you were your hardest critic because Sometimes we're pretty perfectionism, mm-hmm. and we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. So um, I would say strive for progress, but not perfection. Mm. And then my last, this quote was probably my favorite of all time. So it's quotation. You have only to decide upon what it is you want and then stay with it, comma, 
never deviating from your course, no matter how long it takes, comma, or how ro- how rough the road until you've accomplished it. Winners simply do what losers don't want to do. Success is largely a matter of holding on after others have let go. Quotation. So that would be my two biggest things to think about. Hmm. Some, yeah, don't give up. Never give up. Never give in. <laughs> would you mind? Uh, yeah. Would you mind sending me that quote? Oh, I can absolutely. post it on here with the. I think uh, it's hard to look back on trials and really be happy for them, but it uh, it appears I don't I don't know who you were a year ago, but. It, from our conversation, it's oh, the first time we've talked and stuff, mm-hmm. but it seems like you're in a very good place and, and like you, you're going to be able to do a lot with nursing. It was, uh, I almost think of my experience as in like a really rough storm, like in a boat mm-hmm. and you can't go, you can't have a perfect storm, mm-hmm. like to be a skilled sailor. And so whatever purpose it was for me to fail the NCLEX three times, like it, it really has blessed me, and I feel like a better woman from it after a year. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that, but really, it's I do. I feel now. like yeah. it strengthened me. Yeah. Just never let your uh, license lapse, so you never have to take it again. How about uh, that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, seriously, thank you very much for coming on, and, and I'm excited uh, for what you're going to be doing in the coming years with nursing. Thanks for listening to the NRSNG NCLEX Prep Podcast online at nrsng.com. We'll catch you next time.